This is WKYT This Morning. Good morning from WKYT and welcome in. I'm Bill Bryant. And I'm Rebecca Smith. It is Thursday, January 14th. Micah keeps saying we uh, lost the lottery, you know. Oh, I'm <laughs> glad he reminded us, you know. I guess that's true. And now at 631, it has finally happened. At least three people will be splitting that huge billion-dollar Powerball jackpot. We're live to tell you where the winning tickets were sold. And here from a Kentucky mom who is pushing for changes to bike laws for children after her son was seriously injured in a crash. And we have those temperatures outside in the 30s, much better than the teens and single digits, that is for sure. Then we get into the afternoon, a beautiful day. 51 degrees, you gotta love today. Those winds will be gusty out in the south. Gotta pump in that warm and moist air. Ready for that rain tomorrow and then snow for the weekend. I'll have that coming up. All right, thank you. Well, here's the bad news. You did not <laughs> win last night's $1 billion 1.6, actually, I should say, billion dollar Powerball jackpot. At least three winners are going to have to split that record setting jackpot. The good news is you may have won a measly million. Uh, <laughs> several did in Kentucky. WKYT's Michelle Chamberlain is live now with the winning Powerball numbers, and she's up and at it. Good morning. Yeah, there were three lucky winners of the million dollar prize here in Kentucky. That means they had all five white balls. There were also five winners of a $50,000 prize. They, that means they had four white balls and the Powerball. Now, Kentucky Lottery will release the cities of where those tickets were sold later on today. But now to the big winners of the $1.6 billion prize. Three tickets were sold, one in California, one in Tennessee, and the other in Florida. Now, that means these $1.6 billion will have to be split three ways. In Tennessee, the ticket was sold in Munford. That's just north of Memphis. The population there, 4,700 people. And the California ticket was sold at a 7-Eleven in Chino Hills. The store owners will receive a million-dollar bonus for selling that winning ticket. Now, people across the country are hoping to be the big winners. Two guys in Tampa, Florida, even created a $70,000 private Facebook pool. You had to buy in at $500. No matter how many people we got in, it, it didn't really matter. You know, three, four, five million dollars is still enough enough money for everyone. I was bummed I lost two bucks. Can't imagine 500. And here at KYT, we had an office pool. There were 43 of us. We all chipped in, and we did win. We won 16 bucks, not 16 bucks each, 16 dollars total. So that's about 37 cents. It won't even buy a postage stamp. But remember, it is just a game. Live in Lexington, Michelle Chamberlain, WKYT. Oh, we know it all too well. <laughs> all right, thank you very much uh, for the report this morning, Michelle. 6.33 now on WKYT This Morning. Also new this morning, a Lexington home is temporarily condemned after it was hit by a car this morning. The hit-and-run crash happened just before 5 o'clock this morning off Leestown Road. Police caught up to the driver on Main Street, but they say he is not going to be facing any charges. WKYT's Mark Barber is live to explain why. Mark, good morning. Good morning, Bill. That's because police say the driver is a diabetic who had a medical emergency, so they don't think he knew what he was doing when he crashed into that home and then drove off. Officers say if his car did not break down here at the intersection of Main Street and Oliver Lewis Way, who knows what could have happened next. Now, officers loaded the man onto an ambulance here at the intersection about an hour ago. They say they worked to reopen as quickly as they could Main Street here so they could get everything cleared and back open for drivers ahead of the morning rush. Officers tell us that they started searching for the hit and run driver after he crashed into a home on Boiling Springs Drive around 515 this morning. A woman was inside the home when the car smashed through a screened in front porch and knocked the front door off the home. The driver then took off and made it to Main Street, where the car finally gave out. The home has temporarily been condemned as firefighters wait for code enforcement to check for structural damage. We're, we're erring on the side of caution, and until until code enforcement is, uh, of course, they're out of the office right now. But until they get here, we're just going to have them stay somewhere else. The two people who lived in that home, the husband and a wife, they have been displaced as crews work to assess the damage there, try to get a handle on if that structure is damaged or not. As for the driver, police say it is likely he will not face any charges because he did not know what he was doing. Live in Lexington, Mark Barber, WKYT. 
All right, thank you, Mark. This morning, three people wanted by Lexington police in connection to a recent murder are still on the run. Less than 24 hours ago, Lexington police announced they had issued warrants for three juveniles, along with 21 year old Kenyon Hips and 18 year old Marcus Smith. The group is wanted for the murder of 18 year old Caleb Hallett last weekend. Two of the juveniles are in custody, but Hips, Smith, and the third juvenile are not. Meanwhile, Lexington police say they expect to make arrests soon in the city's fourth and latest murder. Someone shot and killed 23 year old Timothy Brown Jr. Tuesday night. Police found him in a car outside McDonald's on Russell Cave Road, suffering from multiple gunshot wounds. Police say Brown was meeting with someone at the time he was shot. They have not released the names of any suspects in the case. New on WKYT this morning. A man is fighting for his life after an overnight crash in Lexington. This happened around midnight on New Circle Road near Alumni. Police say the driver was ejected from his SUV during the crash that landed on its side, that vehicle. The driver was taken to UK Hospital with life threatening injuries. Police did have to shut down New Circle at Alumni for more than two hours after the crash. The time this morning is 6 36 on WKYT, and a Kentucky mother and her teenage son will be joining a state representative and doctors in Frankfurt later. This morning for a news conference. They're proposing a new law on bicycle safety for children. It's called TJ's Bill and is named for TJ Floyd, who suffered brain damage from a crash that happened on his bike some time ago. WKYT Sam Dick recently traveled to their hometown in Oldham County to meet the teenager behind TJ's Bill. Five years after his bike crash, when his head hit the pavement, 13 year old TJ Floyd has come a long way. He's slowly putting words together to communicate. What do you think about your mom? Is she pretty cool? Yeah. yeah. My dad is very strong. Your dad's very strong? Yeah. My dad is 34. TJ wasn't wearing a bike helmet when he fell. And suffered a serious brain injury. How important is a bike helmet? Is that important to safety when you ride a bike? Yeah. TJ's mom says five years ago her children did not normally wear bike helmets. Now she and her son are the inspiration behind a bill that would require children in Kentucky under 12 years to wear a bike helmet when riding on public streets and public bike paths. If you can afford a bike, you can afford a helmet. Unless your bike was donated, then there's places you can get a helmet. And that's, I'm not trying to be harsh about that, just things that, you know, we wouldn't have thought about or did before, and we kind of wish we did. Heather Floyd believes a bike helmet may not have prevented all the injuries to her son, but could have lessened the severity of TJ's brain damage. We didn't really know what a brain injury meant. And um, I think a lot of the helmet bill hopefully would save another family from going through what we've been through. TJ has just gone back to school part time and he receives speech therapy several times a week. He's a happy boy who smiles a lot and likes to tease his mother or reporters doing interviews. Yep. Can you blow it up? Yep, he knows it. Let's do it one more time. This is Sam Dick reporting. And if TJ's bill is passed by the state legislature, parents could be fined $25 for their child not wearing a bike helmet while riding. On a first offense, the parents could have the charge and fine dropped if they show proof that they've bought a new bike helmet. Well, the UK law student charged for crashing his drone into Commonwealth Stadium is talking about his experience. UK says Peyton Wilson put fans in danger when the drone flew dangerously close to parachutists who were dropping into the stadium during last year's home opener. But Wilson says no one was ever in danger, even when the drone crashed. Still, police charged Wilson with wanton endangerment. He eventually took a plea deal and agreed to pay a fine for criminal trespassing. He says it was a major learning experience. It was an incredibly humbling experience um, to be subjected to both uh, the criticism via the media and um, even my peers and colleagues. Um, Folks really call into question the uh, utility of drones going forward. Um, however, I still um, would venture to say that drones are going to prove a very useful commodity. Wilson says the video from the drone is now posted on YouTube. It does not show the drone crashing into Commonwealth.
Nearly a week after a brawl broke out during a middle school basketball game in Pike County, suspensions are now being issued. The fight was caught on camera during the game between Belfry and Phelps Middle Schools. The Pike County School Board has suspended Belfry head coach Bobby Varney without pay until the end of June for his involvement in the fight. He will still be allowed to teach. Two referees, along with some fans involved in the fight, are now banned from all Pike County athletic events for the rest of the school year. 6.40 now on WKYT this morning, 20 before 7, and former Agriculture Commissioner James Comer is running for a new office. The Republican has filed paperwork to run for Congress in Kentucky's 1st District. That's mainly in western Kentucky. It does curl up into this area. Another Republican, Hickman County Attorney Jason Batts, has also filed to run for the seat. The district's current congressman, Ed Whitfield, is not seeking re-election. Last May, Comer narrowly lost the Republican primary for governor, to current governor Matt Bevan. Well, this morning we're learning from one of the key characters in a hit Netflix documentary. It's Making a Murderer, and it follows the case of Steve Avery. Avery was wrongfully convicted of a rape in Wisconsin. A short time after his release, he was charged and later convicted of murder. Avery claims he was framed for that crime, but his ex fiancee Jody Stachowitzki now says she, he is guilty. In the documentary, Stachowitzki is very supportive of Avery. But now she's telling CNN's headline news that it was all because an act, because her, she feared for her safety. Do you believe Stephen Avery killed Teresa Halbach? Yes, I do. Why? Because he threatened to kill me and my family and a friend of mine. I was in a bath and he threatened to throw a blow dryer in there and he told me that he'd be able to get away with it. Well, Stachowski says she decided to speak out after seeing multiple petitions to pardon Avery. Hmm. All right, let's check to see how traffic is moving. 642 is the time. And let's go out to Officer Don, check out live drive traffic. We do have a couple of situations. Good morning, Don. Good morning. Well, the overall view, not too bad. On the interstate, the Circle and Man of War, check that from Versailles Road uh, all the way over to the Hamburg area. And in real time, you can see the traffic's moving okay, so far at least. Now, we do have a couple of uh, things with construction happening today, of course, on Hayes Boulevard. They're going to continue working Todd's and Hayes Boulevard. And there's a state trooper there that's sort of running radar through that construction zone. So you want to be extra careful if you're going to be passing through there this morning, just trying to reduce collisions in that area. Uh, let's get a look at your drive times right now. On the way in, should be okay from Nicholasville. That's just 13 minutes. Uh, Versailles about 10. We expect 17 from Paris and uh, from Richmond across the Claysbury Bridge. You can see about 31 minutes right now toward Lexington, of course, depending on exactly where you're headed to. But so far, nothing major sticking out. Now back to you in the studio. All right, Don, thank you very much. And this is uh, going to be the warm day before we yeah. start the, the descent. <laughs> yeah, we'll get ready for those cold temps uh, next week. Can you believe that zero in the forecast I can't. for Monday? I yeah. can't. Uh -huh. 6.43 now. Much more. More on WKYT this morning, and your Thursday is on the way. A rescue dog has a lot to smile about this <laughs> morning, and that's what he's doing. He now has millions of others grinning as well. I'll show you this very special talent. You see it right there. I'll tell you more about this really cool dog after weather. Yeah, it makes you smile every time you see that. Another thing that makes you smile here comes the really warm air today. It'll feel amazing today, but you better enjoy it because here comes another Arctic blast towards your weekend. I'll have that coming up next. Now, your hour-by-hour -hour forecast with meteorologist Micah Harris. You know, the past few mornings we've been sitting in the single digits and teens. Not this morning. We're there in the 30s outside. Yeah, that's still on the chilly side. Don't get me wrong. But it's much better than walking outside and having to sit in your car and try to defrost your windshield and, and get going early in the morning. So things are looking pretty good out and about compared to where we have been. We're at 34 degrees now, right now in Lexington. 32 there in Danville. You go into Richmond, go into Mount Sterling, head down toward Owingsville and also Flemingsburg. Pretty chilly this morning. The only 20s we see, you got to get in the mountainous regions down in southeastern Kentucky and then go up toward the north. 27 right now in Covington and also Williamstown. Now we're looking across the way, not much going on. We have clear skies at the moment. Yes, we have clouds to the north of us. And it's going to be like yesterday where we have mostly sunny skies and a few clouds filter in later during the afternoon. Huge zone of fire pressure down toward the southeast. And what that is doing is just actually pumping in some warmer air and some moisture into the region. And that's why we're going to be toward the afternoon with extremely nice temperatures. You got to remember this time of year, we're in the lower 40s. This afternoon, even by noontime, we have already surpassed that. We'll be in the mid to upper 40s there by noontime. Teachers, it'll be a great day to get the kids outside. 
And let me tell you this, hear me on this, teachers. This is the only day in the forecast you'll be able to do that. Trust me on that, because tomorrow here comes some rain. Following day is just way too cold, okay? So we're going to be seeing the 40s there by noontime. That means we still have three to four more hours of heating left, which will put us there in the lower 50s later on this afternoon. Extremely nice day. We're talking sun and cloud mix as well. Let's talk about your day tomorrow. Morning hours more likely will be dry. We can't rule out an isolated chance at a couple of showers during the morning hours, but mainly it's around noontime that you start to see this rain move on in. And it's widespread, covers a large real estate of our viewing area, but it's not a lot of rain. Your rain gauge won't be filled up uh, to the top once this is all said and done. But still, pretty sloppy conditions there on Friday. That'll take you into the afternoon and evening. That means any plans going off into the evening, heading out to basketball games, going out to those, uh, it's going to be pretty wet there during that time. Overnight and into Saturday morning, here comes a few flakes. Now, is this going to be a major issue? Absolutely not. We're not seeing a lot out of this in terms of how much is going to reach the ground. That's just uh, determined once we get a little bit closer. But I, I still expect some flakes to fly around. Pretty confident in that. But I just don't see much accumulation. Only isolated spots with very light accumulation coating at best. Then we head into Sunday. Sunday morning looks good. Sunday afternoon and evening, here comes another system. Now that's a clipper. That's a quick moving system, a lot of wind, and also light accumulations are expected there on Sunday. So if you're looking for a chance of snow, looks like the best accumulation should be on Sunday as opposed to Saturday. It's after a day of 51 today. Feels great. Then we go from 51. Why don't you just flip flop those numbers? And that's the high on Monday. 15 degrees on Monday. We're going a 50 degree swing there from today through Monday, you can see the overnight low right around zero. So 51 to zero from now through Monday, guys. Excite you a little bit? <laughs> what a drop. Not so much? Yeah, me neither. It's a change. I don't know. <laughs> but we've, we found a dog that is happy about everything, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, this dog right. would probably be thrilled. <laughs> Judging on his facial or, or her, I guess it's a he, uh, the facial expression of this dog. Uh, the dog nearly broke the internet this week after a video of him went viral. Here is the pooch everybody's talking about with that big grin. Uh, watch him cheese it up with that hilarious smile, huh? Aww. The video first surfaced yesterday <laughs> after an animal shelter in employee noticed the dog's ability to smile on command. And the rescued pup certainly has plenty to smile about. The animal shelter says he is going up for adoption soon, so oh. he'll have a new home to smile around in. At last check, the camera-loving pooch's pearly whites have been viewed more than 12 million times wow. on Facebook. What you about just that? wonder, how is that possible? <laughs> a lot of dogs smile with their eyes, but man, He's this cute. dog really... <laughs> Takes the cake, doesn't every, it? Every dog has his day. Yeah. I mean, he has. Uh, he looks like he likes every day, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's cute. Good to have you with us. 6:51 on WKYT on your Thursday morning. Yeah, more news. Stay with us. Good morning again. Welcome back in WKYT. This morning it's now 6:54, and a Lexington home is temporarily condemned this morning after it was hit by a car. That hit and run happened before five in the morning off Leestown Road. Police caught up with the driver on Main Street. They think he had a diabetic emergency and didn't know what happened. He continued driving before his car broke down at Oliver Lewis Way. Police say he is not facing any charges. A man is at UK Hospital this morning with life threatening injuries after an overnight crash on New Circle Road at Alumni Drive. Police say the driver was ejected from his SUV during a rollover crash. New this morning, a man is in the hospital. He has serious injuries after a crash in Jessamine County. Last night's crash happened on Kentucky 169 near TaylorMade Farms. Sheriff's deputies tell WKYT News that 26 year old Anthony Scheffel lost control of his car in a curve and ran off of the road, hitting a rock wall. Scaffold has been rushed to UK hospital at last check. He is listed in critical condition. Brazen attacks in Jakarta, Indonesia have left seven people dead. The attackers set off explosions at a Starbucks in a bustling shopping area and waged gun battles with police, leaving bodies in the streets. This is office workers watched in terror from high rise buildings. Police say five attackers and two civilians were killed, while 10 people were injured. Seven leading Republican presidential candidates square off tonight in South Carolina. The latest polls show Ted Cruz ahead of Donald Trump with Marco Rubio in third place. The first votes in Iowa are a little more than two weeks away. U.S. Senator Rand Paul of Kentucky is making a last minute push to be included on the main stage for tonight's debate.
Uh, there was uh, one poll showing that uh, he would be in the top five, and that's what the Casey's making today. Right now on WKYT.com, we're chasing all the angles after three winning tickets were sold to that $1.6 billion Powerball jackpot, and the crowd roars. <laughs> there are three $1 million winners in Kentucky, by the way, and several $50,000 winners. We'll let you know when we find out where they were sold. We are expecting that information this morning. We're following up as Lexington police deal with a violent start to the new year. Four murders already in 2016. Warrants out in one of those shootings. Kentucky.com reporting on a bill in Frankfurt that would reveal lawmakers' pensions, which are secret right now. Several other states reveal public pension information. Also, there may be a Kentuckian to watch in the Olympics in Rio. Lexington fencer Lee Kiefer, the Dunbar grad, is number one female uh, foil fencer in the U.S. and also ranked in the world. CBS This Morning, coming up shortly with your eye opener and our local updates. Join us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter or Instagram, and always WKYT.com. Yeah, things are looking pretty good there on the roadways. Today, it looks pretty good, man. The nice day in the forecast. Been saying that all morning, and I just want to drill it in that after this, it doesn't get better. I promise you that rain slides in tomorrow, and then, guys, tomorrow night into Saturday, start to see some snow showers. It looks like the best accumulation should come on Sunday system that will come through. All right, a lot to watch, and mm -hmm. nobody's more up to date than you to start your day. Thank you for being with us on WKYT. Have a great day.